Today we're going to look at a short Python program that enables us to delve into the world of image manipulation. We'll take two images and we'll cross dissolve from one to the other and back to the original and save it as an animated GIF. We'll use the third party Python library Pillow to do this and we'll also use the Python standard library's ARG parse module to figure out what are the input images and what's the name of our animated GIF. Along the way, we'll learn a little bit about image manipulation at the pixel level. Let's look at what we're ultimately going to try to create. We're going to start with two images, like this image of me on the left and this image of this llama on the right. We're going to try to create a cross-dissolve effect between the two of them. So let me run the program, and I'm going to have to provide two parameters, which are the names of the images. And then I'm also going to have to provide a third parameter, which is the name of the result. So I'll call mine result.gif. You'll see it runs pretty quickly, and now we can try actually opening the image. Let me open it in Safari, and hopefully it's going to look correct. Here we have the original image cross-dissolving into the llama, cross-dissolving back into me, cross-dissolving again into the llama. And now let's go through the code on how we're going to do this. So what really is an image? Well, I get into this in a lot of detail in a podcast episode of Copec Explained Software, and I'll put a link to it in the description below. But let's just talk about a basic raster image as we're going to use in the program. So here's an image of a llama. And you know what an image like this really is at a fundamental level is just an array of pixels. Let's try zooming in. If we zoom in enough, you can really see those individual pixels. And you know, each of them obviously has a discrete color and each of them also has a location. So we could refer to each individual pixel as just a location and a color. And if I know all of the pixels, locations, and colors, well, then I can recreate the entire image. I could think about an individual pixel here as having a row and a column. For example, if I'm counting in computer terms starting at number zero, then this is column zero, row zero, right? And if I look over here, here's row two, column two. So if I just know, oh, I'm going to have this exact shade of green at row two, column two, well, then I can actually start thinking about how I want to manipulate the image at the pixel level. What if I just change the color at row two, column two? Then I've changed one pixel of the image. So I can just think about the image as a whole as pixels that have locations and colors. And then I can change what's at a particular location in terms of its color to change the image. The Python standard library doesn't have built-in functions for doing a lot of image manipulation, so we're going to use a third-party library called Pillow. But Pillow is a really old library because it's a fork of an earlier library called Pill, the Python imaging library, that's been around just about forever. So it's a great library to learn because there's a lot of great image manipulation functions built in, it's widely supported, and it's really stable. And there's actually not that much code. The heavy lifting is being done by the Pillow library, which I told you earlier is a fork of Pill. That's why it's from Pill import image for our one import for that library. We're using arg parse to get arguments from the command line about what the names of the two starting images are and what the name of the output image is. We're going to do some shuffling. We'll get to that in a little bit. And I am using some type hints here just for the function signatures. I think they add a little bit of clarity about what a function takes and what it returns. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, but I think they add a little clarity. I'm actually going to start at the bottom here instead of the top because I'm going to look at where the program enters. And we start by setting up an argument parser. Now, if you haven't used the arg parse module before, it's actually pretty easy to use. All you have to do is provide what are the names of the arguments that you want to have provided. And you can go a lot into a lot more detail than this with it. I'm just using a really basic use case here. And so I have three different arguments that I want. The source image, that's the image we start to dissolve from. The destination image, that's the image we go to. And then the name of the output image. And you see just in a few lines of code here, I've set up the argument parser, and then I can use it to actually parse the arguments that came in from standard input on the command line into my program. And I'm gonna get back out some output, which I can then actually use the names that I provided here as uh, property names to actually get back those arguments that I needed. So I have arguments.source, arguments.destination, and arguments.name coming from the command line. And if someone doesn't use the program correctly, so let me show you that. Let's say I do python dissolve.py and I only provide, let's say, the first of the three arguments that are required. Uh-oh, usage. I was supposed to provide source destination name and the following arguments are required, destination and name. Isn't that nice? You get that for free by using the argparse module. It does a lot of nice behind the scenes work for you 
It's really easy to use. I'll put a link to the documentation in the video description. Okay, once we actually have the argument parser set up, then we call our create dissolve method. And let's look at our create dissolve function. So it takes the starting string, which is this, the image file name that we're starting from, the destination file name, and then, and I, maybe I shouldn't have called the destination, but I mean the destination image that we're dissolving to, because the real destination is the name of our output animated GIF. So how do we do it? Well, we're gonna end up accumulating a list of images, and these are Python imaging library or pillow images. So I start with an empty list because I'm gonna generate them as I go. I try opening the two images that I'm gonna cross dissolve between, and that's what's going on here. I'm getting references to the source image and the destination image. I need to make sure that they're the same size. If they're not the same size, obviously I can't create an animated GIF that looks nice cross dissolving between the two. So if the destination image is not the same as the source image in size, I resize the destination image to be the same size as the source image. Then, here's how I'm actually gonna accumulate which pixels to change. I'm gonna start with a list of all of the unused pixels. And what I mean by that is the pixels that have not yet been dissolved. And so I keep a list of unused pixels and I generate it the starting list, which has all the pixels originally, using another function called generate pixels. Now you'll notice here this special asterisk before source underscore image dot size. Source underscore image dot size is actually being unpacked by the unpack operator here. What that means is what was originally some parts of source image dot size, namely its width and height are actually being pulled out and used as parameters for the generate pixels method. Or I keep saying method because I'm so used to writing classes, but I mean function here. And so what am I doing in generate pixels? I'm getting that list of all of the different locations of pixels. And as I described earlier, we can just describe pixels as having a row and a column. So I'm going through all of the possible row, uh, columns here. I'm actually doing column first here and then all of the possible rows here, and then I'm storing them as tuples inside this list. So pixels, you can think about as a list of tuples of X and Y locations in the image. And then I'm shuffling that entire list. And the reason I'm doing that is when I do the dissolve later on, I want it to happen in a somewhat random order. I don't want it, to, if I wanted to do this in a really interesting way, I could have maybe dissolved from left to right or top to bottom. So I could have specified a more interesting order if I wanted to have something that looked more linear in terms of its effects. But I wanted something that was kind of scattered and all over the place. So I'm just doing it randomly. We're gonna move different pixels um, one after another and they're gonna be all over the place. And then I just return that list. So then back in create dissolve, I have now that list of all the different places that I'm gonna end up using for the cross dissolve. And it ends up being all the pixels, but I'm not gonna do all of them at once. Why am I not doing all of them at once? Well, if we look at the actual image, let me go back and open it for you again. Let me actually open it for you as individual frames. You can see here that in each frame, just a few of them are changing, right? And it's actually more than a few. We'll see in a minute that's actually 2,500 of them. But you can see them gradually change from one side to the other, and that creates the illusion of dissolving. So it's kind of like a flip book. If you, when you were a kid, you ever drew like little pictures on each page, and then you flipped like a, a big stack of paper, uh, and then you, it looked like there was a change happening, like movement happening, but there wasn't really. That's what's happening here too. We're only changing a few pixels at a time. Well, 2,500, but a few means three or more, so that's technically right. Uh, we're only changing 2,500 at a time, but the cumulative effect of doing that a total of 73 times makes it look like a full cross dissolve from one to the other. So how do we actually move those 2,500 pixels? Well, we have another helper function here called transfer pixels that goes and takes transfer count number of pixels. What's transfer count? It's a constant. I defined as 2,500. It takes 2,500 pixels and it's gonna move them from one image to the other, but we don't ever wanna move the same pixels, so we keep going through that unused list of pixels, and we're removing more and more of them as we transfer those pixels, so unused pixels has less and less pixels over time. In other words, those are the pixels that are still unused. So let's look at transfer pixels. Transfer pixels, pretty simple. What it does is it keeps track of how many it needs to transfer, and that's what to do is, 
And as long as there's more to transfer and we still have unused pixels, and we're doing a little Python trick here. If unused is actually empty, it's gonna return false. So we'll just not go through this loop once we run out of pixels. Then we'll find a new pixel location by popping off the end of unused. And we'll use this method built into pillow to set a pixel on an image using a pixel on another image by using get pixel. So we're getting one pixel from the destination image and we're setting it onto the source image. So you can think about it like we're copying one pixel over in the exact same location from one image to the other image. And then we decrease how many we still have to do. And so by doing this in chunks of 2,500 pixels, we get this illusion of having this kind of dissolve effect one frame at a time, 2,500 pixels at a time. And so we just keep doing that as long as we still can. And we keep adding those newly created images into our images list that's keeping track of all the images for the ultimate animated GIF. But then we go back the other direction, right? Once we go from David to Llama, we go back from Llama to David. So we just reverse that list of images and we just add all of those images as well in that reverse order. So we end up with a set of frames going one way followed immediately by a set of frames going the other way. And then this is another nice feature of Pillow. It has built-in support for generating animated GIFs. And that's what this last line here does is it saves the list of images all together as an animated GIF. And so this is, we're specifying here some uh, criteria about the animated GIF, such as how long it's gonna take between each of the individual frames. Um, is it gonna loop forever? By setting loop equals zero, we're gonna keep looping forever. And duration, by the way, is in milliseconds. So this is a nice, really compact way of generating animated GIFs. And I'm sure you could use this for all kinds of other interesting memes and fun things you wanna do with animated GIFs you wanna create. Amazingly, that's about it. This is not a lot of code. I mean, there's almost as many comments in here as there is code. It's really easy using the pillow library to generate all kinds of cool image manipulation effects. And this cross dissolve hopefully just got you excited about them for you to do so many more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe using the buttons below. And all the source code from today is available on my GitHub repository called Dissolve, and I've put a link to it in the description below. I'll see you in the next tutorial.